Hello, everybody. My name is Jim MacArthur, and I help you with these surveys. This particular survey is a humdinger, as they say up here in the boondocks of Michigan, where I am at the moment. It's a humdinger because it has exceeded every previous score on every single amenity. The 2023-2024 to season has been a clinic on how to run a club such as this, and I am anxious to share with you some of the details. Because there are always new people on the board or in the audience, I would like to make sure they understand the process used to create this success story. You do the real work, of course, but it's your understanding of this process which guides you in the direction of addressing the key issues. You do a survey because you can't do a census. A census is when everybody answers your questionnaire. A survey is when only some people answer. Your goal is to make intelligent decisions on behalf of the entire population. It should be apparent then that all surveys are simply estimates of what the population believes. But if enough people answer, that estimate is a very accurate picture of what the entire population thinks even including the opinions of those who did not take the survey. That's sometimes difficult for people to accept, but it's mathematically true. Our purpose is to make good decisions about what the majority wishes to do. For that purpose, the survey is adequately accurate if we get a good response. In our case, we always get around 1,000 responses to each survey. This year, we topped out at 985. We have 1,299 doors and about 2,500 people who are given a chance to respond to the surveys. And this year, we got a 40% response rate. That is very good for this kind of thing. And it allows us to say with 95% confidence that the numbers you will see today are within 3% of the true number. Where the true number is the answer we would get if all 2,500 had taken the survey. It is plenty accurate enough for what we are doing. So let's start with how we scored these surveys. The possible answers for each question are in a numeric range from one to five, where five meets or exceeds your expectations and one greatly fails to meet expectations. With numbers, we can make quantitative calculations and that is very important. Never forget, our goal is to have the member decide for us what is good and what is bad. This must be done by the member, not the guy running the survey. I've seen many cases where the response options were not designed correctly, so the required differentiation was not done by the members. Therefore, the guy doing the survey could only make some kind of guess at what caused the change in a score. No survey guy will ever say, sorry but we did not learn anything from this survey. When we get these scores, we plot them on a graphic like this. The range is from three to five, and the middle white line is at four. We take all the responses on an amenity and average them to make a single plot on the satisfaction scale. This is what it looks like for some amenity, let's say golf and it looks like the average is about 4.25 or 4.30. Then, we look at each and every person's score, first for the amenity golf, and then for the overall question of whether the club is meeting that person's expectations, and we compare those two scores. The comparison for an individual means nothing, but if we do that with sophisticated statistics for all respondents, then we are able to calculate a single number which tells us how important that amenity is, how much influence it has on this population when they consider the question of whether the club is meeting their expectations or not. It's called a regression analysis, used thousands of times daily in the world of commerce, but never in the world of club surveys until we introduced it back 20 years ago. It allows a manager to know whether he is working on something important or something trivial. The resulting graphic is called a quadrant chart, and you will see it many times again as we analyze the various amenities.
Let me give you this hypothetical example. The red line shows where the average score is for question number one, overall meeting expectations. Golfing experience is scoring high and has a strong influence. In the upper left quadrant, we find that the dining experience scores relatively low, but has a very high influence on overall expectations. If you can find a fix that increases the future scores for dining, then we know for sure that this will drive upward the future scores for overall meeting expectations, because dining is a key driver of why people vote the way they do on overall expectations. By the way, the board and club management have 100% control over the satisfaction axis. However, only the membership has control over the vertical axis. An amenity is either important or trivial, and that opinion exists only in the minds of the population. All targets for improvement lie within this club. There are no outside goals to meet in order to succeed. And so, when you do these fixes for a long period of time, one at a time, always targeting the item which has the greatest influence, then you get a chart like this, and this is where you are. In 2024, all key amenities and measuring points are now scoring at 4.20 and above, and all of them are important influences as to whether they impact how members feel about their expectations. An absolutely marvelous achievement over the past 15 years. But now we will take a look at each amenity and point out how we can keep this success story going for another 15 years. I will cover a few demographic issues before we look at the data for each amenity. I said earlier that we have 1,299 doors involving only 2,500 people. And that is because we have about 8% singles. A little over half of the population are Florida citizens. And about 20% of those reside here on campus year-round, while another 50-plus percent are here only about half of the year, retreating as snowbirds when the hot weather hits. We have what people say about themselves from this survey, plus the club keeps records on the age of new buyers along with the age of those who leave permanently. The average age at the time of this survey was 72.2 years. At the last survey, it was 72.0. Next year at this time, we project it to be 72.4. So the group is aging about two months per year with a relatively small percentage of people joining for the first time and a relatively large percentage of current members getting another year older. However, if you look at the years of membership, you will see that since the recession of 2007, more people have been coming in each year as a trend, so this should temper that growth in age somewhat. And if the situation I described on the previous chart continues, then the aging process we have recorded since 2016 will slow down, and by the year 2033, the club will not average 76 years, but will average 74. And that would be a good thing. As we now begin to analyze the various amenities, products, and services, the first thing to look at is the Strategic Satisfaction Index for 2024. This is an amalgamation of all amenities, weighted as we assigned them during strategic planning meetings in 2014. Really great gains have been achieved over the past three years, except, of course, for the hurricane, but we are now at an all-time high of 4.68. So, now let's look at why that strategic index keeps climbing. Here is that overall chart I showed you earlier. Everything except the dining experience scoring at about 4.50 or higher. But don't forget that 2023 was the first year dining came in higher than 
and this year it got even better once again. Let's start with an analysis of the dining experience. Here is the quadrant chart for dining, and these are the main variables which people think of when ranking their approval of dining. Look at ambience, which is the orange ball, and represents how much scores for this amenity increased when the River Club refurbishments were made. The shadow orange ball with the dash black perimeter line is where this score was in last year's survey. As you can see, each and every component of what defines overall dining experience has increased this year. The exception is waitstaff, which declined a bit from last year, but its absolute score is still at 4.63, which is just where you would like it to be. To prove that there are no problems with waitstaff, we can look at the factors which determine the waitstaff score. The factors which make up the overall waitstaff score are shown here, and they are, from the top down, are they punctual in delivering hot food from the kitchen? The order is correct, just the way you expected it to be. Do they exhibit promptness in delivering the check upon finishing? Rank courtesy and appearance. Rank their knowledge of wine and food menus. Score friendliness and responsiveness. Rank the promptness of a drink order upon your arrival. Each of these is above 4.50, so you can see that there is no problem with waitstaff scores. There is a problem, however, with one dining room service which scored lower in 2024, and that was reservations. Let's look at the impact reservations had on overall dining experience. Here we see that the score from all respondents to the survey on the question overall how satisfied are you with your dining experience was 4.20. However, here is the score given to overall dining by those 281 people who scored low on reservations. Obviously, their dissatisfaction with reservations is having a major impact on the total population score for dining. Finally, here is where overall dining would have been without those who are dissatisfied with reservations. So, here are the two recommendations we have given to Eric on the subject, and you will probably see his fix in action next season. First, Research the best restaurant management software to find how the leaders in this area do it. Then communicate your findings to Northstar, your information technology provider, so they raise their reservation component to that level. Northstar claims that its mission is to maintain its technological superiority, and they will respond if you can reveal that they are not leading the industry via the dining reservation component. Second, review the survey comments on this issue to find out what is most disturbing about your current rules and regulations and change them. And don't forget what your goal is here. It is to reduce the number of complaints. It is not to optimize the kitchen operation. We had a consultant at Bear's Paw who said, at a private club, the answer is always yes. We can do that. Now, what is the question? There are no problems with the golfing experience as you can see. The little red arrow at the top of the chart is where the overall score for golfing experience came in. Even pace of play which rarely reaches 4.00 at any club. Even that has a fairly good score at Pelican Sound. Finally, once again the card and bag staff have received the highest score of anything else on the survey. Almost a perfect 5.00. 82% of the members play golf, with two-thirds of them playing two or three times per week. Of the 82% who play, about half are involved with league play and half open play. 16% of our population plays on men's day. 14% of the ladies play in the nine-hole league. 
and 12% play on Ladies' Day or in the Women's Golf Association group. Community management year over year shows a very significant improvement and very high scores. As you see from the shadow scores of 2023 to the solid scores of 2024, each of the items being managed had a major improvement in its score in this survey. The red star is the score for overall community management in 2023, and the green star is the score for the same question in 2024. Although each component of the course scored above 4.00, Bunkers scored the lowest, with 30% of respondents giving bunkers a score of 3, 2, or 1. Bunker scores are holding back the substantial improvements which have been made on overall golf course maintenance. For example, compared to the survey of 2010, green scores are up 41 points, restroom scores are up 71 points, short game area is up 37 points. But 15 surveys later, the score for bunkers has dropped 9 points, while simultaneously changing from a trivial factor to a key driver of overall golf course opinions. Management should analyze the comments and figure out a fix which will address the concerns of the 30% whose scores are penalizing this amenity. Scores are high for the fitness program, which suffered heavy damage during Hurricane Ian in 2022. During 2023, extensive repairs and the replacement of damaged equipment was a high priority. And, as we see today, the membership is once again scoring high the factors underpinning the program. Of the 985 people who responded, 23% claimed to attend fitness programs off campus. The Rackets program at Pelican Sound is very likely the best in Southwest Florida. And, as you can see from this quadrant chart, members are very satisfied with the way the courts are maintained and the program is being managed. In the past seven years, Pelican Sound made two critical strategic decisions. One was to build this extensive Rackets program. The other was to build extensive outdoor dining into the main club renovation. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Pelican Sound people had outdoor exercise and dining options which did not exist at most other clubs. As a result, those clubs had no food revenue, lost much of their wait staff, and had to charge their members with large operating assessments, not capital assessments. Those came later. I'm talking about operating assessments, which are normally very rare. Today, many clubs are engaged in catching up or patching up those strategic shortcomings which they missed during the brief window of opportunity prior to the pandemic. It is decisions like this which define the quality of leadership in your top echelon clubs. About 12% of our members are currently active at tennis, and about 36% are currently playing pickleball. These charts show how many days per week these people are engaged in their sport. Here we have two charts involving water sports. The red bars show how scores declined across all amenities in 2023 following the hurricane in 2022. The blue bars then show how scores for the amenities rebounded in 2024 versus those 2023 scores. Particularly in water sports, this program is back running again, and that was a pretty quick recovery, considering all the damage involved. Club communications continue to score well. No problems here as scores are up 2-5% to 5 from 2023, and the mobile app has been around long enough for most people to be skillful in its use. The Information Technology Committee should analyze the comments on innovative technology and new approaches carefully, for there are a number of suggestions for improvement on specific issues which may be worthwhile to pursue. Scores are very high for administration, up 3-5% to 5 over last year, 
and with many comments supporting the people in this part of the club. This analyst is impressed with how well admin scores because this is the first interface where an unhappy member takes his or her complaint. It takes a good listener to handle such issues without exacerbating the situation, and not every club has such people. Are you getting value for your investment in Pelican Sound? That is a key question. Right up there with question number one on every survey, rate how well this club is meeting your expectations. Southwest Florida is one of the more expensive places a person can call home in this country. It has a great deal to offer, climate being one of the key benefits. But do the benefits balance out the burden? Are you convinced you did the right thing coming here? Are you getting top values for your decision to purchase into this community? This analyst, with 20 years' experience in evaluating this question in Lee and Collier counties, can tell you that few clubs will score anywhere near this number on a questionnaire from their memberships. Pelican Sound is unique in this respect, and the most rewarding feature is the fact that things get better every year, year after year, for an extended period of time. It truly is a testimony to how such clubs should be run. There are no apparent problems with security and privacy, which is now getting very high marks. The club is in a study to empower club cameras to be smart problem identifiers via artificial intelligence. This is coupled with a training effort to ensure a seamless transition for guests and vendors. In addition, this amenity is very well led as you can see from this recent comment from the general manager. Captain Cheriz, for eight plus years, continues to go above and beyond the call of duty to ensure the members are well supported daily. Eric Long. About one in three members is now playing bocce ball. When I saw this slide, along with a very large jump in satisfaction scores from 2023, I contacted Eric Long with the following question. Eric, what caused the bocce ball scores to jump in this survey? The number of players is about the same. Did you add courts or league? And here is his reply. The bocce leagues have been very popular, and everyone enjoys the camaraderie. The chair of the committee is very involved in the leagues to ensure everyone is having fun. So, why did I leave security and bocce ball to the end of this report? Because I would like to close with what I believe to be the singular, defining, characteristic or attribute of this fine club. And that is the unity of leadership I have seen over these many years. It starts with the employee who manages security, picks up again with a volunteer on a committee connected with bocce, and rises finally to the board, that group bearing a legal and ethical relationship of trust in which a team of member volunteers acts for the benefit of the entire membership. Boards have a duty of care and must act prudently in the management of other people's money or property and must avoid conflicts of interest as they do so. Not an easy task by any measure. And here is how this board is rated by those. Other people. Those who are the owners of this club. Outstanding recognition of their hours spent coming from those who know them best. Listening and communicating were at an all-time high as the club rebuilt from Hurricane Ian. Catastrophes can be very disruptive. The best boards have a recovery plan, and the best communities remain flexible and understanding as management deals with the aftermath. Leadership and followership are symbiotic. You can't have one without the other, and the better you are at one, the better you are at the other. A very large part of leading successfully, particularly after a catastrophe, involves the attitude and contributions of those being led. The membership of Pelican Sound, as I have noted in past reports, is better informed and more homogeneous in its decision-making than I have seen at other clubs. Some of the top scores in this survey, once again, go to the general manager, Eric Long. 
Not many clubs conduct surveys wherein the GM or the board are evaluated by the membership. Some clubs do not even permit members to see the comments they have submitted in a survey. Therefore, this consultant does not have much data on how a GM might be evaluated in clubs such as this. I join with the membership in the conclusion that Eric is doing a really good job as the point man in this effort. Good job, Eric. And on that note, I conclude this report. It's been a pleasure once again to work with such outstanding people and results. Thanks for the chance to be involved. Thank you for your attention today, and congratulations on a job well done again this season.